Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. In the last two videos, we set up the geometry pipeline to accept the geometry asset class from the content tools and started working on a WPF renderer so that we'll be able to inspect the generated or imported geometry content. Today we'll add the viewer control and hopefully see the fruits of our labors that started a while back with the geometry asset pipeline. In the geometry editor folder, I'll add a new control for viewing the geometry, which I unimaginatively will call the geometry view. This is a control that I can use to display 3D objects. And I'll use the mesh renderer as the data context for this control. First, let's fix these namespaces. Okay, so now we'll have a grid and a viewport 3D in here to display the 3D objects. Here we added a perspective camera with these properties and I bound the position of the camera to the offset camera position of the view model that we have and the looking direction of the camera is bound to camera direction. So if we change those then the camera will move in the scene. Next I'm going to add the lights to this viewport 3D which is a representation of our scene. The first light that I added is the key light and I'd like that light to follow the camera so everywhere that the camera is moved to the light will go with it and it's basically the same as having a flashlight with us to shine on the object that we are looking at. The next light is the skylight which shines from above so its direction is towards the negative y direction. And the ground light is the opposite of it. Ground light will shine upwards. And the ambient light doesn't have any direction, just a color. And that's all we need to do here. The rest of it will be handled in the code behind of this control. Now the first thing that I'd like to do here is to set the geometry for what we did here to add a model to our scene. And every time our data context changes, I would like to set the geometry. If you look at geometry editor, we see that every time a new asset is set here, a new data context is also created. So here I'll add an event handler that would set the geometry. This index is to tell this set geometry to only display a certain mesh because a mesh load that we are displaying can consist of one or more meshes. So if we only want to display one of those meshes, we can give it an index. And if we want to display all the meshes, then the default value is minus one. And that means just to display everything. Thank you. 
This viewport is the one that we just added here, and it has children. The first child that we added is the collection of lights. And whenever we set a new geometry in this scene, we need to remove the old one and add a new one, but we don't want to delete the collection of lights. And therefore, I'm going to check if the number of children in this viewport is two. That means that we have a geometry in there in addition to our light collection. And then we remove that child at index one. In this for loop, if the index of this mesh is not the same as the index that we want to display, we just skip over everything else. And that way we can only display the mesh that has this index. Here we create for each mesh a new mesh geometry 3D and set its properties for positions, normals, indices, and texture coordinates. Next, we create a diffuse material and a specular material and a material group to add those materials to it. And this 50 is just a specular power. So the higher you choose this, the smaller the specular highlight will be. So here we have this model group, like the one that we have for the collection of lights here. And in that model group, I add all the meshes that we make here. And then to those models, I make a binding for the diffuse. So in case we want to change the color of the diffuse material, we can do that by just setting this binding. And every time we change the diffuse brush, in this mesh view model, then it also changes the appearance of this model in the viewer. Finally, if this mesh was the one that we wanted to display, then we are done and then we break out of this loop. And then we put this model group into a model visual 3D. Again, like we did for the light collection here, we put it in the content of a model visual 3D and add it to the children. So that's exactly the same here. And I think if we now would add this geometry viewer to our primitive mesh dialog, then we would see something if we did everything correctly. Here at the end of this control, I can go ahead and add a geometry view. And I would also like to display the camera position here on top.
This string format G5 displays the five significant digits in our numbers. Speaking of which, I need to do that here in number box as well, because right now we are doing it like this and I think it's better to type in G5. Now it's a scary moment because I'm going to run the editor and see what happens. Well, this is giving us an error because I'm calling reserve instead of resize. Again, here is an index out of range because I made a typo here. It should be num vertices instead of num indices because we are examining vertices here, like we did in process normals. Okay, at least it didn't crash. So there should be definitely something here. where we set the position of the camera. I forgot to also adjust the direction of the camera because that's just the reverse of the position of the camera. If we don't do that, where we define the position of the camera, depending on the size of this object, then the position changes, but the direction of the camera doesn't change. So we need to actually set that here as well. Now let's try again and see if we can display anything. And there you go, here is our plane viewed from above. Right now we can't move the camera, but we can change the size of it. So now that we managed to successfully generate a primitive mesh, as you can see here, we have a plane and we can set its width and height. So we know that the communication between the editor and content tools is working correctly. I would like to be able to also go around the object and inspect it from various angles. For a plane, it doesn't matter that much because a plane is very simple and viewing it from above is sufficient to conclude that it's a plane. But for more complex types of primitive meshes that we have here or any objects that we will be importing from a 3D file in the future, it would be very important to be able to view them from different angles. And besides, we want to actually figure out how to move the camera around an object. And it doesn't really matter that we are using WPF's renderer right now. The way that we are going to move the camera will be the same everywhere. First, I would like to interact with the scene that we have by using mouse clicks. So I would like to hold down the left mouse button and drag the mouse so I could go around the object. And I would like to use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And I would like to use the right mouse button to change the location that the camera is looking at in the vertical direction. Let's go to geometry view and then I can put in here those mouse interactions. And all we need to do is to put some event handlers here. I'm making a background transparent because if the background is not set, it will be null and therefore no hit testing will be done. So we need to handle six events. Now let's generate these methods. I'm just pressing F12 to automatically generate an empty method for each event handler. 
First, let's implement the left mouse button interaction for moving around the object. When the user clicks the left mouse button, I just want to remember where the mouse was clicked and remember that the mouse button is down. So I need to have a field for the click position. And we also remember that the left mouse button is clicked. I'm going to generate a field for captured left as well. And since we are going to also use the um, right mouse button, I'm going to also create captured right. And then I'll remove it here because we are going to use it later. And then we can decide what should happen when the mouse is moving while we hold the left mouse button down. So that should result in the camera moving around the object. First, we check if the mouse button is still held. If we move the mouse without holding any button down, then nothing should happen, of course. And when we let go of the left mouse button, we set capture left to false. And we shouldn't release the mouse capture, of course, when we are holding the right mouse button down. So we check for that here. And continuing mouse move event handler, I'm going to track how much the mouse was moved with respect to this click position. And using that distance, I can decide how far the camera should move. I'm going to rename this click position to clicked position. It sounds better. And if the button that we are holding is the left button, then we can move the camera. I'll write the move camera method later because it needs some explaining about coordinate systems. If the left mouse button is held down, then we move the camera around the object. And if the right button is held down, then we change the location the camera is looking at in the vertical direction only. Here I am calculating how much the camera target should be displaced in the y direction, so up and down. This formula might strike you as a bit odd because I am multiplying the y direction of the mouse movement by this number and also the square root of x squared plus z squared camera position. So let me explain the first part. The y is how many pixels the mouse was moved. And this is just an arbitrary conversion scalar that allows me to say, okay, one pixel in vertical direction should be one millimeter in our world units. And this part is to make sure that if we are far from the object, the camera movement is scaled correspondingly. And here we set a new target for the camera by adding this Y offset only to the Y component of the camera target, which effectively moves the camera up and down in a vertical direction. Now would be the time to write the move camera method, which is responsible for setting the camera position in such a way that it appears to be moving around the object in the viewer. 
However, since it involves some coordinate transformations that I'd like to explain first, and because this video is getting too long, I'd like to thank you for joining me in this game engine programming adventure and continue implementing the camera movement in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time, until then take care and happy game engineering!